Every scripting professional has a library of uh, scripts, snippets, if you will, that are saved uh, and reused from project to project. Save the software applies big time when you're under pressure to bring up a new UCCX or create a CSQ on the fly. And so <clears throat> beyond cutting and pasting, however, every UCCX scripting professional dreams of creating a self-configuring body of code that can be applied to a wide cross-section of custom applications, kind of a script toolkit that unleashes advanced functionality while maintaining a high level of customization. The killer script, and uh, we'll let you look over my shoulder as we attempt to create such a solution create a reusable script uh, that uh, we can bring up and configure, customize for a specific application. So let's look at uh, a few of the requirements uh, we might have for such a script. So on a CSQ basis, we want the script to be reusable. We want it to be self-configuring. In other words, based perhaps on the uh, uh, application uh, trigger dialed, the script could configure itself to deal with a situation in which the call needs to go directly to a group of agents. Perhaps the call needs to go uh, to an IVR application first in which we'll do uh, prompt and collect. Maybe we need to send the caller to a menu in which they can self-navigate through the rest of the script, or perhaps there's some utility application that uh, needs to be launched for this particular trigger. Uh, perhaps read a uh, HTTP link. So there's a requirement that we create a script that can on the fly do these basic uh, elements. We also need to be able to customize our prompts on the fly. We want to be able to change languages. Each script might have a different schedule. We may have different uh, uh, service levels for each of these CSQs. For example, one time the script is launched, we may in fact want to play estimated waiting time. But for another CSQ using the same script, we don't want to do that. So first, let's uh, take a, an overview of the components in this system. One of the uh, best practices that I've begun to employ is the use of triggers um, that represent numbers that I know cannot be easily dialed. So they're not going to be reached by accident. And uh, I'd like a, a 10 digit number. So here we have a, a trigger that's 300-999-8001. And I sequentially number the uh, triggers in the application to follow this number path. It looks kind of like an area code and phone number, but there is no area code or country code or conflict here. And that's what I like about these things. So I will use these kinds of numbering uh, in most of my script work and a lot of uh, application development in the Cisco call manager in which I want to make sure that I have digits available and that they're not going to conflict with anything else in my dial plan. So in the application section of the UCCX, uh, where you add triggers to your application, I have for this particular application, this one's going to be uh, pretty sophisticated in terms of uh, the number of different CSQs that we're going to handle. So here we have uh, our triggers and they're going to range from 300-999 to 8,000 uh, 8, forward. I think we go up to 8,057. I think there's actually 57 different uh, CSQs, which means 
uh, that there will be some uh, 57 different configurations to the particular script that we're going to talk about. Now this script uh, requires a XML file and I'd like to take you to that first because uh, then you will better understand how this script is laid out. I like to use, um, you could use pretty much a text editor for your XML documents. I happen to like uh, Stylus Studio for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is that it enables me to actually uh, create an XPath um, and see I can bring up an XPath uh, editor here and I can actually write my queries here and uh, test the output before I go put them in the script. But what we've done here is to uh, generate an XML file called QOptions. And uh, this is not a tutorial on XML, so it assumes you understand XML. It's a tutorial on a killer script, so I'm not going to delve into the mysteries of XML. The uh, um, file is QOptions and what you'll notice here is that it's going to be indexed by the triggers that I previously showed you. So clearly we're going to uh, launch the script uh, when the trigger is dialed and then we're going to capture the trigger number and use that to index the XML file and bring back the variables that we will use to reconfigure the script on the fly. And so far, uh, in this particular script, and, and XML is extensible to the, ex by, by uh, that I mean that I can come back and add more fields. But basically what we've done here is we've created a field called route type. And what the route type will do is enable me to say that this is a, a type direct. And direct means send this right to the uh, agent group, right to the, uh, select agent. Uh, I've allowed for the possibility that this could be a menu, in which case we'd probably call through a subflow a menu that's going to be played to the caller. Uh, next thing we've done is to create uh, a queue name. In this case, uh, I always set up as part of my deployments uh, two applications, one called Sandbox and the other called Playpen. Uh, because I, I sometimes need two different uh, test numbers uh, and run two different scripts at the same time because they interact. For example, you have a script that maybe uh, activates the callback, so you would need two triggers to do that. So Sandbox and Playpen. And then uh, the directory name. Now I've created a set of generic prompts that So let's take a look at the key components of this uh, killer script module. Uh, again, the assumption here is you have some scripting, you, you know, you've done some scripts. So I'm not going to uh, go through setting up parameters and uh, establishing the attributes. The assumption is you know this, but uh, what I'd like to walk you through is the key parts here. So. Uh, the script at this point, this is Rev1, right, is uh, relatively simple and straightforward. Where um, some things I normally do is I generally get a, a copyright notice in here. I list any subflows that are required in the uh, system. So here I can see that uh, the script requires some subflows for the estimated uh, wait time, the callback. Uh, CC admin, s holiday checking, some, some stuff that I use on a regular basis. Uh, I put my version of the script here. If I make changes to the script, I date it and uh, get it in there. And uh, I put uh, technical support information and uh, design notes. Here in my design notes, you can see that uh, um, I've listed out the minimum licensing requirements to run this script and I uh, put the default values that are set when the script is launched 
uh, that will be subsequently changed. And uh, any, any other notes that the next guy through here is going to need when he tries to figure out what we were doing. I set mandatory information. Now there is a mandatory requirement. This script depends on a variable called string DNS. And that, of course, is the trigger information that we previously discussed. When the uh, call comes in, we delay, we accept, uh, um, we check for DNS. We set exception handling in the script, too. What, what do we do if things go wrong? And that's what uh, this exception um, on contact inactive, what do we do? I also want to know what time the call started. In other words, the script was launched at this time because later on in the script, we'll probably also note when the call, when the call entered the uh, CSQ and its search for agents so we can calculate how long they've been waiting. Uh, we set the string DNS here. So set string DNS equal to the, st the, the called number. I also uh, uh, at times want to know the ante of the caller, so I'll go ahead and get that. At this point, uh, I typically set a, an option for debug. So if I want to run the script in debug mode and control some of the call flow without having to go through the laborious process of dialing and walking through menus, and I can set that up by setting this to debug. And if it's true, um, we're going to uh, set the debug uh, DNS number. So one of the issues has is if I assign this script to my uh, sandbox or, or playpen, uh, obviously the trigger that launches that script may be not the trigger that I'm using in my XML files, and I'll want to set that. So by setting a debug mode, I can then go ahead and uh, effectively uh, set the correct DNS for the rest of the script. If it's false, do nothing and, and continue. And at this point, we're going to start our XPath. Now, XPath enables me to walk through the uh, XML file here and find the pieces of information we need to make the rest of the script work. So to do that, uh, we, we create an XML document we set our path. Now, this is where I've done some other videos on this, but I'll walk you through this quickly. So we're going to, you know, uh, create the XML document. And again, this is kind of like, in, it's not technically correct, but I think of it as uh, creating a memory image of the document because the document actually lives out there on the drive. Uh, and then we're going to have to say, what we're looking for. So in this case here, I want to go into the XML file and find the string directory name. I want to get that piece of information. So it says here that the XPath is equal to the string XPath begin plus the string DNS plus XPath n plus the directory name. So that's a big mouthful, but what I've done here is create some variables called uh, XPath begin and XPath end to shape the actual string XPath expression. So let's, uh, string DNS was obviously set up here when we called the script. So at this point, what we're going to do now is look down here uh, and find uh, string XPath be uh, begin. So as you can see here, what, what that is set to is slash slash file name option, okay, so q options forward slash q at id equals, okay, and then we're going to drop in the string DNS, which is that 300-999-7200 number, and then we're going to add the string xpath end, which is nothing more than a bracket uh, slash followed by the string directory name. 